Hey there everybody and welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to go over a little bit on how to use AI and image blending to create your very own science fiction book cover in Adobe Express Beta. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go to the plus sign at the top of the screen and I'm going to search for a book cover. And this is going to provide me two options, which is really nice, a book cover and an ebook cover. And we're going to stick with the traditional book cover and go with that. So as soon as we get this, um, I, you know, I, I researched kind of sci-fi covers, right? I looked at a lot of stuff on the internet. You can see this Dune one really pops out. We see a lot of figures and silhouetted figures in front of planets, um, a lot of round shapes, which is interesting, a lot of clouds. So I'm going to take inspiration from all of these and kind of come up with my own element. So the first thing I want is a big blue-ish alien planet. So I'm going to go ahead and get my text to AI. I'm going to make this rather big and I'm going to see what happens if I type orange and blue alien planet. And let's let this run through. I have it set to photo, but I may change that. Uh, we'll see kind of what path the AI takes us. So we're going to go through this and we're going to find some options. These are great I may want to add a plain background though because I don't really want any of the the planet or the another planet in front of it. This is really nice though. I'm really digging that. Let's see on plain background and let's see what that gives us. Okay, that's starting to be what we want. I don't know if I dig these little moons on there, so we'll see what the other options come up with. That's kind of fun. That's definitely more along the lines of what we're looking for. Let's load more and see what else it will give us. A couple seconds here while it loads. Oh, I kind of like this, this dual look here. That's really, really neat. So I'm going to go with that and we're going to go back and I'm going to remove the background and hopefully it will isolate the planet, which it usually does. We'll make that just a little bit bigger. So now that I have the planet, I'm going to do a little color correction as we go, and then we'll probably come back and color correct it. But we need some sort of background. So I'm going to start by just going to media and searching orange gradient. And I'm going to look through my orange gradients. And this is one that I like because it just kind of has some dust like appearance to it. So we're going to snag that and we're going to move our planet to the top. Just make sure everything's in. Just kind of getting our elements. We'll blend these in a few seconds. Another thing I want is I want a black and white gradient for the bottom. So if I could spell, there we go. And I want something kind of like this, which is really nice. This is going to give my text and my title something to sit on and I'm going to move that behind the planet again. We're going to get rid of these hard lines. Don't worry. Uh, I want to look up some clouds. So let's see what kind of clouds we can get. So going through our cloud settings, this is really, really cool. I kind of like that. We're going to use this one just to kind of pull in some of those blues and we'll play with that just in a second as well. So we'll pull that beneath the planet. Things are looking pretty good so far. So again, we're already having some successful um, elements in here, but as you can probably notice, it's a bit of a hot mess with all these hard lines. So how do we resolve that? Well, one thing I like to do is not just remove my background, but I like to use the erase tool to do this. So I'm gonna go to the circle brush and I'm gonna make my size huge, my hardness very soft, and I'm going to start just by taking off that top hard edge. So immediately, I just kind of run my brush there. I'm going to then go to at least 50% and do that again. A couple times, it doesn't have to be perfect. Maybe down to the 20s. In this case, I hit 19, but it's not a big deal. And then eventually, just lower it as we go. And if you see any areas in which you think still need to be blended in, you can easily go in and do that and then hit done, and there we are. Let's set it now to multiply, and you can see a pretty good blend is happening. I like this, so we'll kind of scale this up just a little bit. Let's do the same thing with these clouds. Change the brush to a circle brush, 
create a huge large size in this case i like the top i'm going to just kind of play with the bottom area here uh gotta get that soft brush going that soft brush will just give me a little edge of opacity that's a little gray and we're going to kind of cut down to 75 kind of start blending these together just back and forth nothing fancy cut down a little bit further and hit done that's looking really really good as well very cool we can play with the blending modes here just to get kind of some of that background color to look and feel free to like switch through blending modes see what works for you and i want to do just one more pass of the eraser so i'm going to run through that just get in here and i i, I can see those lines so I don't want necessarily those harsh lines. So I'm gonna kind of go through with some higher level opacity numbers just to kind of clean those up. There we go. And that's a little bit more along the liking. So I really dig this. This is looking good. All right. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some text. So I'm gonna do Outer Worlds is the name of my book or my fake book. So we're gonna pull Outer Worlds here and I'm going to put that down near the bottom and we're going to play a little bit with the text and the AI generated text. So looking through my typefaces, I really love this one called Vortex or Vortex or Vortice, however you would say that. So I'm going to use that one and it definitely has a sci-fi feel and that's looking awesome. We need contrast obviously, but we'll get there. And then I want to do another text, but this time we're going to just use plain and we're going to put my name as the author. And we'll probably switch this to a more uh, readable typeface here. So something a little bit more traditional. So we'll go back and maybe use my brand type just to keep it super, super traditional. All right. So now that I have that going, I need to add some color contrast. So we'll kind of do for now, like kind of a sandy yellow. And for this, we're gonna do AI text. Let's go ahead and type smooth yellow metal. That could be gold, but I kind of like to see what the smooth yellow metal gives us. Give that a couple seconds and indeed that looks really good. I kind of want it to be more puffy, so I'm gonna see what happens when I click this option. This option looks really cool too. The hard part about this AI stuff is knowing, again, which option to pick, which one's gonna be the best fit for your type. Let's go back to that original one. That looks pretty good. So let's go back and let's add some shadow. I'm gonna play with the hazy filter, but in this case, I'm going to have kind of a dark haze here and that is looking absolutely awesome. I think I'm gonna go more toward the white side or even the, if we did yellow, just kind of the off yellow, just to build some hierarchy of type. We'll play a little bit with things like the line spacing, just to kind of get that to be a little bit more and the letter spacing, just to pull that out. Things are looking really good, awesome. All right, let's go ahead and add more stuff. Let's go to clouds again. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a few of these clouds just at the bottom here to kind of cover up our area. And we're gonna do a multiply. We can also do a screen to get that cloud to show up. And I'm gonna make sure that is actually underneath my Outer Worlds typeface. Big trick here, I hold the Alt key, I drag it over, that will duplicate it on the fly for me. And we're gonna just add a couple more elements and these are looking really, really good. At this point, you know, you always can go in and add more effects. So again, if you wanted to kind of colorize them more. The other thing we could do too is we could remove the backgrounds to these if we wish. So if I hit the remove background, you can see the, the benefit of that is now I can hit that with a multiply and I can get some weird looking um, color with that as well. So again, Feel free to kind of just play around with these. I'm gonna pull the opacity down a little bit, just ever so slightly. And I may go to my adjustments and just darken these. This is when we're starting kind of that blending that I mentioned earlier. 
you know, when you start hitting things with adjustments, you can see it's starting to kind of do really what we want it to do. Um, I'm gonna, God, I kind of want a big cloud as well. I have an idea of putting the central figure in there. So we're gonna try kind of a bigger, more centralized cloud for up front. Remove that background. Go to our layer stack. It looks messy at first, but I promise it will come together when you start doing your blending modes. We'll hit that with a screen and we'll go to adjustments and kind of pull that down a little bit. Again, we're just getting multiple layers blended together here. Play with the shadows just a little bit more and maybe just pull in that contrast. Loving where this is going. All right, so next I wanna have a person. So let's do man standing alone. Let's see what this gives us. So we have a ton of options and I do want kind of a full body figure here. And you know we're gonna silhouette this, so I'm less concerned about the outfit, but this one's kind of cool. So let's take this person and pull it up, and that's kind of where they're gonna sit. We'll give it a second to kind of load into the cloud. When that is in, we can hit our remove background and hope for the best. And as always, that does the job for us. And I'm gonna move this kind of in between my clouds and we are going to eventually kind of paint out his feet, so don't worry. And let's go ahead and silhouette him. So we'll go to effects and we're gonna do, do duo tone. And we could do a ton of duo tone here to see the character if we have somebody we wanna see. But in my case, I wanna just make both of those black so we have a really nice kind of silhouette. And I'm gonna then go to that trusty erase tool, go to my circle brush, make it big, make the hardness small, kind of trim this down a little bit, just like I did those other layers. And just scroll and scrub to the best of my doing. We'll see if we need to ch adjust it when we go back. Nope, that actually worked out pretty perfectly. So all of a sudden we're getting some cool things. Now, one of the big questions I always get is how do you make it feel like it's just not separate pieces when you're doing some sort of design, whether it's in Photoshop, Illustrator, you name it. In this case, I actually like to throw another gradient on it. So if I hit orange gradient, right, which is right here, I can go and I could even throw that the first one we had just to make it simple. I could have duplicated that, but I throw that on. And what I'm gonna do is put that on everything that is under the text. So I'm going to do this. We're going to set that to multiply. We're going to set that to screen will be too bright. And I'm going to just lessen that. And that's going to start bringing everything on the same visual plane. So it kind of tints your whole image to kind of look good. And we're not done yet because we do need some more clouds. So let's go back to clouds and let's see what we can get. Let's go ahead and again, just to keep it simple, let's grab some of the clouds that we previously used and we'll do remove background this time, which is gonna look really ugly. Okay, not, no, not too bad actually, but we're gonna set that to screen and we're gonna move that behind our character. Again, now we're just blending these areas so we can kind of nudge that down and to the side. We can go ahead and hold alt to duplicate that layer, or we can hit Control C, Control V, and we can then move that beneath or behind the planet. And then we could go to our adjustments, and I'm gonna just kind of darken these. Again, I'm filling in the space. I'm getting that space to kind of have this, this effect that I want. Um, I'm curious too, if maybe there's like a lens flare. I don't know if, I've never actually searched for this in Express. Sure enough, we have a lot of optical flares. So I'm curious if we, gosh, let's put one of these in and let's see, make it super sci-fi here. What happens if we multiply? Multiply is not the right one for that. Screen would be. And then hold Alt. And then we can kind of flip that even to get that overall look. So, so as you can see, you can go to download and you can say this is a PNG, a PDF for higher resolution, 
or a JPEG just for kind of mock-ups and whatnot, and we are good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and can't wait to see again how you use Adobe Express Beta to expand your creativity. Thanks everybody.